Hey guys, Buckeye Bar guys. Uh, we wanted to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to us here on uh, Buckeye Bar Talk. Uh, great show we got coming up today. Uh, we're really looking forward to you guys uh, listening and watching it. Um, but just wanted to remind everybody, just uh, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the all notifications bell, uh, and to, so that way anytime uh, a new show comes up, you guys will uh, be alerted to it. And don't forget to like the video and uh, comment on the video. All interactions with us uh, helps us continue to grow, and uh, we appreciate your support. Now to the show. Welcome back, everybody. Buckeye Bar Guys here on Buckeye Bar Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm John. Tonight's date is Saturday, February 19th, 2022, and uh, we're here to discuss uh, what's happened the last few days in the, the Buckeye world. Uh, you know, our favorite uh, man from up north got a contract extension and then uh, got a big commitment this week for the Buckeyes, and then Gene had a, a nice press conference this week, so uh, we'll get into that. That would be probably take up a good majority of the back end of the show. Um, he had a lot of good things I thought that he said, and, um, some things that I disagreed with, but we'll get into some of that too, as, uh, we get into it, but, um, all right, Harbaugh contract extension. Uh, so they're, they're still pretending like, uh, you know, he didn't try to leave and, uh, <laughs> like, you know, that was all big misunderstanding, I guess. And now everything's kumbaya up there and, uh, he's getting more money now, uh, even though, I don't, it doesn't seem like it's a, still a lot more money. It was only, and it only really adds. Does it add a little, just another year or two to the deal that he signed last year? Like it, it doesn't seem like it was a huge big thing yet. But yeah, um, no, I think you're you're definitely right on that. So let's see. All right, he'll be making seven million dollars in 2022. Um, salary will also increase annually, reaching seven point six to 8 million in the final year of his contract. So, I mean, not it, it, it's increasing. It's not going up more than, you know, he won't be making more than a million by the end of it. Uh, let me see if I can find any other details on it. He has a $3 million buyout in year one, and but then goes down pretty significantly. It looks like it goes down like 700,000 a year. So, if I'm reading that right, so it's 2.25 million in year two. So it's what it's seven seven hundred fifty thousand a year. It goes down then. So yeah, I think so. Three million like year one, two point two five million year two, one point five million year three, and seven hundred fifty thousand in year four. So they don't they don't really care. They want to get <laughs> they want that guy gone. They're they're giving him a good a good. Yeah, out and then they give him yeah the like yeah his. And man. I know he does. He has incentives built in there too. If they win, you know conference titles and national titles so yeah so yeah it was just i don't know it was kind of weird like just uh a couple of extra years added you know a little bit you know he got a pay raise from where he was going to be at but yeah the buyout thing was very interesting it's like you sure you don't want to go here <laughs> let's make it easy for you to leave i'm sure and i'm sure his agent negotiated that so i mean if i miss on michigan side of it i'm like well like why are you in neg negotiating? You want to, I mean, you only add a couple more million to the contract, but uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll just give us good buyout. So is that, does that mean he's really not looking at leaving or does it mean that uh, now he's got another, if uh, he gets another opportunity to leave, it's just going to be less money for somebody to buy it out. I, I mean, doesn't it just sound like Michigan's just making it easier for him to leave? Like he, he said, you know, I'm here as long as you guys want me. And they're like, no, we know you don't want to be here. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't got anyone else to go to. Kind of right? kind of feels that way right now. I uh, mean, we'll, we'll telling have everybody a, have a better plan in a couple years. <laughs> yeah. So that was that situation up there. It's uh, still seems like it's uh, very drama packed uh, with everything that's going on. But, uh, you know, I'm ready, though, to, you know, turn the page on the whole Michigan chapter from this year. Of course, I don't. Was it this week? I, I read this week. I swear that their director of recruiting left to go to. Yeah, um, it was it was this week. So, yeah, he left. I don't know. It's just a lot not, of. We I mean, I'm sure they'll get someone else, but not good. Yeah. All right, moving on to actual Buckeye news. Uh, so uh, Luke Montgomery, so the big win for uh, Coach Fry on this one because he ends up being his uh, Lee recruiter, and it seemed like it was a, uh, it seemed like it was going to be a 
four year deal early in the process that Luke Montgomery was going to come to Ohio State. And then it kind of seemed like it fell off there for a minute. And like, are we going to lose out on this kid? He's only up a couple hours from Ohio State, you know, from, you know, in Finley. Are we going to really lose him? You know, the Michigan was in it on there. Notre Dame was in there. A couple other guys were in there, you know, and then Fry comes in. He gets the relationship back on track. And, uh, Luke Montgomery is a, a Buckeye, so very happy to see that. you got to tie up the big kids in the state. I mean, I know Ohio is flush with talent, and every now and then you'll lose a big-time kid to another school. That's what happens. But the majority of your big kids, they need to be going to Ohio State. And so, I mean, this is a, a big deal to get him. And, you know, possibly if his brother ends up, he, his brother, I believe, is a, either eighth grader or a freshman. I can't remember, but he's a quarterback if uh he ends up panning out. Uh, maybe then it'll be, uh, you know, come play your last year, possibly your first year, possibly maybe with your brother or maybe your brother leaves the year before or whatever. He moves on because he's going to the league, but it maybe he leaves such a good taste in the brother's mouth if he ends up being a good quarterback that uh, Ryan Day get, could get a big time in-state quarterback here in a few years. So, I mean, it's always a pos- possible positivity type thing to look forward to. Yeah, and, you know, like you had mentioned, every now and then a kid slips out of Ohio. I mean, I guess it does happen, but this is, you know, he's the number one ranked player in Ohio and not as high ranked as what Jackson Carmen was a couple of years ago, but still, I mean, according to the 247 composite, he's the fourth ranked offensive tackle in the country. So, yeah, so. this is a big get. And big guy, you know, best player in the state of Ohio. You couldn't lose this guy. Not a good time for, I mean, I know you still, you had the year or whatever. So, you know, Justin Fry had his time. So maybe that was as big of an impact as Justin Fry made immediately with this kid. He was like, all right, I can have my recruitment now. And now it looks like he's going on to the bigger stuff. He wants to be Captain Buckeye in this class, which I don't know if he he has the same persona, you know, same just about him, like what Jack Sawyer did for his year, what CJ Hicks did for his year, but you need that guy in that class. Yeah. So that's- I mean, and sometimes you get kids from around the country that do it, but it always seems like when you get a, when you get a kid from the Buckeye state early in recruiting that really loves being here, he's a, he's a big time recruiter for Ohio state. And that goes all the way back to, you know, even pre, you know, hardcore social media days. I mean, Beanie did. I mean, I remember talking, listening to stuff on, the social media boards, uh, Beanie was that guy back in the day. And, you know, I mean, you look about the last several years and stuff, the diff- the Jack Sawyers of the world and stuff. I mean, these guys are, they get at these kids like, you know, yeah, come play for Ohio State. And they have love for Ohio State. And, you know, they want to see Ohio State succeed because they this has been their school. So, and, you know, it's always good to have a, a positive person that's, you know, spreading the positive propaganda, you know. <laughs> to the oh. kids from around the country. And, it, you know, he said Carnell Tate. Uh, I believe he bl- said Ennis's name. He said uh, Kirkland's name. I mean, these are all guys that he's going after now, and uh, he's going to get in their ears. I think he said Malik Hartford from Lakota West. So, yeah. so he's a top 300 kid in the country also. He's a safety. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely, you know, there's a lot. And I think that marks three or four from Ohio already, top 15 kids in Ohio. <laughs> that they've got committed. So, and a lot of these guys I'm looking at the list right now, a lot of them have not, you know, they haven't committed anywhere yet. So now it's time to start going around and cleaning these kids up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's awesome though. I mean, just like, as we mentioned, you know, you lost Carmen a couple years ago, so you couldn't do it again. You had to, you had to lock this guy down. Huge first get for Justin Fry. I love it. Yeah. Me too. Really excited. Um, Yeah. So uh, it's nice that, you know, them getting forward, you know, you know, it sounds like uh, Knowles is, you know, he's then going after that linebacker down in Louisiana who's had a, has a relationship with them. And it seems like, you know, it seems like right now there's a lot of good buzz about the coaching, the new coaches out here. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's always there's always two aspects to coaching in college football. It's first, can you get the guys there? And then it's, can you develop them when they're there and turn them into superstars? So, you know, it it seems like the, it seems like the first aspect so far is looking pretty good. I mean, we got a long recruiting now cycle in front of us uh, for this class. Um, And, you know, these are all new coaches coming in. They don't necessarily have the rapport with some of these guys that the previous guys had, but you know, you, 
it's about building then for the next the following class after that which i think uh, they might even make more of a splash for who knows um but good start uh you know they got some good kids already in the class and now let's see them over this next year you know really knock some of these out of the park and uh you know so I, i'm really excited how uh, if you can get a solid out of fry you know if he can give you 60 percent of what heartline and alfred give you i mean that's 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 a, an improvement 70 60 70 percent is an improvement i mean he doesn't need to be brian heartline uh he can be a really if he can get along get some big names in there where some of the names we've missed over the last few years and you know that offensive line will be very scary very quickly if uh, right. they develop correctly well like, like you said he not necessarily has to be brian heartline when it comes to closing but if he gives Brian Hartline's effort when it comes to recruiting, you know, you're going to hit on more than you're going to miss being Ohio state. And yeah. let's face it. The previous guy just didn't, I don't, he was more about getting it done on the field than, you know, getting the kids. Yeah. Which is a very important part. And that's mm-hmm. now Fry or Fry needs to equal him in that. They need, they get the kids in and now he's got to equal it. Yep. Then I think he will. I mean, I'm, but like I said, Huge first get. I love it. So hopefully he just builds on it. Yeah. All right. So uh, before we really get into the gene stuff, uh, anything else you want to, uh, I think, well, you know, we've talked, uh, we'll probably, we're going to start throwing in because we're getting closer to the tournament. This has been a very busy off season. So we haven't really got to talk much basketball. I, I, I mean, I'll admit that I started watching a little bit more of the games the last couple, you know, just flipping back and forth and different things. So, I think starting next week, we'll start throwing some basketball stuff up there as we get closer into these tournaments now uh, to these tournaments. But, uh, you know, the basketball team's looking pretty good at times. I think they they I don't know what the end of it seemed like they were they had a rough one earlier today. I don't know if they ended up winning or not. Um, no, I'm pretty sure they lost to Iowa just from what yeah. I had read around. Yeah, it's just it's really it's strange right now because they're trying to like make up so much time lost yeah so many of these games that you know that they had to postpone they're trying to make them all up right now and it's like and they were talking about michigan had to do it when they were playing each other the other week when ohio state beat michigan but it was i mean they're playing something like like big 10 tournament game like type of schedule right now during the season so and i mean that's going to roll right into the big 10 tournament so it's 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 a tough stretch right now for yeah. sure cuz you're playing a lot of games really yeah. close so they had those couple of covid games where they missed and then you know like i said the off season's been really busy for the football team and uh so i mean it's just i uh i want to get more into them here so I start watching a little bit more so we get ready for the tournament I'll always look forward to the tournament it's just been weird like and it's nothing against the buckeye basketball team it's just College basketball is just, I don't know, maybe it's just me getting older and stuff, and you start realizing, you know, all those years of watching the NBA, and even though I've kind of fallen off from the NBA thing, but all those years of watching, you know, LeBron and stuff being in Cleveland, and then you realize just how much better the pros are. And, uh, I mean, you realize that in, in football, too. The pros are far better than the college kids. Damn. You know, it's just, I don't know. There's just... I think there's just more, a little bit more parity. Sometimes it seems like between college and the NFL that you still get a lot of competitive games on Saturday or, you know, college basketball just seems like with the one and done rules and all that stuff that, uh, I think I just prefer them to go back to the old way of, you know, one and done's done's terrible because I I would like them to go back to the old ways. If you're good enough to go to the NBA, just go to the NBA. And and if you're not good enough to go to the NBA and you decide you're going to the NBA, well, you're, you're, that was your choice. You chose not to go to college and, you know, there's good money over to be made over in Europe and Asia. So, you know, go play professional ball over there if you don't make it in the NBA, but, and then maybe have a two or uh, maybe they need to have then an NFL rule. If you want to go to the NBA, go to the NBA. But after that, you got to play two or three years and, you know, and then at least get some competitiveness back into college basketball. I know part of that has to be done with the NBA too, that, and I don't know how easily they'll go into something like that, but, uh, you know, yeah, college basketball. I don't know. It just not that much fun for me to watch anymore when it's not in the postseason. So yeah. it's just like, I, you know, I, I, I look, I, I used to love watching college basketball and, you know, I love watching the opening weekend, still the tournament. I, I still take my, my, part my pto time where you know for 
Friday and Saturday or Thursday and Friday to watch, you know, all the opening round games, you know, we get all the TVs going and, you know, you're just watching them all and, you know, opening weekend is awesome. And it's a, but, uh, and then, you know, the tournament's pretty cool, but sometimes even that is the weeks kind of go on sometimes it's lost its luster over the last next couple, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the last few years. Uh, but eh, just my opinion on it. Uh, but I definitely like basketball. We'll be watching a little bit more of it now as, as we get closer into the tournament time. Um, yeah. See how those bucks are doing. So, uh, man, Gene had a very interesting press conference this week. So, you know, Jerry, so Jerry introduces him that, uh, you know, he's has to do, uh, you know, well, Gene's here, you know, he wanted to come out and give a press conference and all that. And Gene cuts him off. He's like, he's like, let's be real here. It was Jerry who told me that I had to come out and talk to you guys that it's (laughs) that I've been neglecting it a little bit lately. (laughs) So that. So he's like, yeah. Jerry's the one that pushed with you guys. But he had to get some nice things to say about the Buckeye, uh, the press corps that, you know, they do a lot for the program and stuff, which is true. I mean, you know, you when you listen to some of the I, I was listening to one of the, the Buckeye scoop shows the other day and they were talking about how they have by far in the Big Ten. And they're definitely high up there in the country The the one of the, the largest, uh, you know, uh, just press corps that does games and stuff like that. They're uh, beat crews. And so, and when you really think about it, all the damn websites that they have, which we're members of a lot of them that uh, I, li- I mean, I listen, I listen to uh, like all those guys. So, I yeah, mean, so I enjoy their pies cast and their YouTube shows. Uh, uh, several, we have a, a lot of good guys on our, on the Ohio state, not only the beat, but in just the, uh, on you know, the sites themselves. So, I mean, so you always get good information. So it was good for Gene to say that because it is true. And you see how many of these kids that, uh, how many of these kids go on Letterman row and Buckeye and Bucknuts and at Buckeye scoop and do interviews when they commit and stuff like that. And they all follow them. Like when you see who's following all the guys on Twitter, it's like the whole new recruiting class, they start following all the media guys. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, yeah so. I mean, I think, obviously biased but i think our beats probably one of the best in the country i mean that's yeah. just and a lot of good questions they fun. asked a lot they, of good questions a ton of them. <laughs> yeah they lost asked a lot of good questions of gene uh in this press conference this week and you know he had uh, a lot of good things to say i thought he was very candid more candid than he normally is and you know i think gene sometimes takes i uh, you know we've given him crap i've given him a lot of crap at different times uh but the other thing I do like about Gene, and sometimes maybe I don't give him enough, but some of the things I give him crap for that I should give him a little praise for, the dude can be very patient. And I think he likes to watch what's going on in the landscape of college football, and then he likes to pounce on it. Once he, he kind of gauges where things are going, and he kind of lets all that gauging go through, and then he pounces on it a year or two later. And, you know, he has a very love for Ohio State, and you can tell in some of the stuff he said. And, He's very aware of things that are going on. I mean, he, different things he said in the press conference about how he knows what Ohio State's worth to the Big Ten is. And, you know, he I mean, he literally says that, uh, you know, he th- he pretty much feels that Ohio State gets too many road night games in the conference. And, you know, that should be addressed a little bit more <laughs> so, like when he says stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and he talked about, you know, the scheduling, which he kind of, you know, they talked about how like the scheduling uh, alliance and stuff. It's not really a scheduling alliance because, you know, you know, maybe down the road, some of that will come back up again, but they're not giving up their games against Notre Dame and Alabama. You know, those are in Texas. Those are big games that they want there. And he knows that he even literally said, he's like, I'm, he's like, we have a scheduling philosophy that we do. And if we just play Alliance teams, you know, well, we're going to be wanting to play, you know, we want to play the upper teams, you know, so, you know, what does that do for us? And right. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at that. I mean, we're assuming that USC is on the, you know, the rise, the up and up just because of the coaching situation. It seems like he's taken, you know, the entire Oklahoma team with him and Oklahoma class with them. And so just being Southern Cal, you think that, you know, that's going to be enough to really jumpstart them into what could be their next wave of a very competitive team. But I mean, if we're being honest, what is Ohio state just going to be scheduling USC and Clemson every year? Like yeah, exactly. And I mean, yeah, yeah, it's kind of the same thing with the U though. I mean, you know, I think they're on the up and up also. It kind of seems like something that 
they might start being able to mend that program a little bit and they're going to start being more competitive. I don't well, think Chris the ball is going to let that program <laughs> spiral out again like they always do. I think he is the type of guy that, you know, if he gets them going in the right direction, he's going to keep a you know firm hand on that team and they're going to, I don't maybe not do it the right way, but you know, they're not going to be in sanctions in a couple of years. Like we, the, the you that we know <laughs> that we love, that we the know you that we know and love. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I know. And that a lot of that makes sense. If they get into a scheduling Alliance, like who's Ohio state going to want to play? Well, I can tell you who they're going to want to play in the West. They're going to want to play USC and UCLA. They're going to want to play Arizona state, possibly Arizona, Oregon, and they're, they're going to want to play Oregon and they're going to want to play Washington too, just because Washington's a big school. And maybe Colorado outside of that, there's no interest for them to get Oregon state or to get, you know, I could see them wanting to play Utah, but you know, they're not going to want to play Cal and Stanford. Like what does Cal and Stanford do for them? They're not Washington state doesn't do anything for them. And so, I mean, there's going to be, you know, yeah, they're and, and then when you look into, you know, on the other side of it, yeah, they're going to want to play Clemson. They're going to play North Carolina. They're going to want to play Miami. They're going to want to play Florida State, regardless of what Florida State's add. That's a big game. That's a money game. So they're going to want to play these schools. But, you know, they're not looking at uh, maybe Virginia Tech still, but Duke, no. They're not going to want to, like. Virginia, no. Yeah, I don't I don't see them want to play Virginia. I mean, you know, maybe Brian Day will want to play Boston College, but I don't know if they're going to want to play Boston College. What's Syracuse do? Like, Wait, Forest, <laughs> Syracuse, you said Boston college. I just, I mean, I could see them maybe, you know, a once in a blue moon pit, that's a good close game. And, you know, but Louisville, I don't see them. Wanting to play Louisville. Yeah. yeah. Louisville now. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't see where the interest in playing half of these conferences are. Yeah. So, and he said it, he's like, you know, I mean, in a way, he never he never said Ohio State is the bigger deal for all these conferences. He said the Big Ten is a bigger deal for these conferences. They're, they're the ones that sell the stuff. And he said Ohio State is, he's like, you could fill in the blank of whatever schools in the Big Ten you want. He's like, you know, we're a driver within the conference. He's like, right. he's like, you know, I have to play a very balanced game from being a, you know, being a team player. And knowing what Ohio State's worth is, he's like, I got to do what's best for my my program. And I know what Ohio State's worth is. And, you know, he's like, we share all the money in this conference. So trust me, you know, he says, you know, some of the guy, other schools, they'll mention it on the phones and stuff. They they all know what Ohio State's worth to the conferences, too. That's Ohio State's brought in a lot of money for the conferences, and right, for the whole conference. I don't feel like this scheduling alliance. I don't I don't think going into it that they had thought anything more than, you know, we got to do something to try to like <laughs> cut the sec's legs out. Oh, and he, he kind of mentioned that too. He's like, like they, he's they, like, they, Hey, they like they had a plan. Yeah. But he kind of mentioned it. And I think that's all it was. And he's like, Hey, at the end of the day, you know, if there's some, um, if there's a, you know, a thing that's coming up for a vote or something, we have 41 votes. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think that's all it was is that, you know, we, you know, it was just here for, you know, we were we're doing a a pack, you know, the you know, a voting pack, a voting block, basically, to, you know, keep the SEC in check. If, uh, if this is how everything's going, that, you know, their issues are going to get brought up and stuff like that. Um, so he made some very interesting points. So, you know, Gene definitely understands Ohio State and I, a lot more than uh, what I think a lot of people give him credit for. Um, he did talk about name, image and likeness. Um you know, he, obviously he said that, you know, it's been a big deal for Ohio State. You know, they've had a lot of uh, great deals that have come by from the players and stuff. I mean, talking about some of the players you know, just off the not on the football team. I mean, he's talking about some of the, the Olympic kids. And he's like, he's like, you know, what doesn't get mentioned is, you know, the football kids, and the basketball kids, you know, they're on full scholarships. He's like, that's not the case in any of the other sports on the right. Olympic kids. And, you know, they have a lacrosse player that's, you know, going to make just for doing YouTube videos, I guess, you know, 200,000 a year. And he's on 30% scholarship. The one girl for the volleyball team who is a walk, uh, was a walk on. I'm assuming she's on scholarship now, but she's selling clinics like coaching clinics and or playing clinics and stuff that, you know, things that they never could do before. And, and you kind of think about it, you know, that was kind of makes sense for some of those kids. Like, well, come to my coaching clinic or my playing clinic and, you know, I'll teach you how to play and I'll charge, you know, if, these parents, I want their their girls to grow up to be good volleyball stars. They're already good. They're playing on these high school teams. Well, 
yeah, I'll go pay her a hundred dollars or whatever. She's a college athlete. And, you know, like, so, I mean, some of that stuff makes sense and like, you know, good for them that they get to, you know, use their talent and, you know, and, you know, and maybe they have to be a little bit more creative how some of those people, how some of the Olympic kids are making money, but it's there and they're smart. They're smart kids. I mean, these are, you know, they, they know what they can do, what they can sell. And uh, I mean, good for them. I, I like to see all these kids making money that in the ways that they can, you know, we'll get into the possibly of paying players because Gene, Gene brought that up and, uh, you know, we'll save that here for the end of the thing. Cause he, it was pretty much at the end of the press conference, but, <coughs> but he did talk about name engine Likens. He talked about that edge team that's coming up that, uh, he said that, uh, you know, kind of what the edge team is, is that, you know, so they have, they call it the SWAT team that, uh, the SWAT team makes sure that the, the deals are, you know, there's nothing wrong that goes against the Ohio state law with it. You know, no working for an adult entertainment company or, you know, a liquor, distilled liquors or marijuana, stuff like that. Uh, but you know, they don't really say yes or no on the deal. They just make sure that those, there's nothing like that in the deal. And then it's up to the players to negotiate their thing. Well, the edge team, they're basically, they connect the kids, they connect, you know, the business partners can come into, um, you know, to Ohio state and be like, this is kind of the type of player I'm looking for. And then they can come out and said, well, here's five, six guys that meet your, what you're looking for as a business that play on our, our, our teams. And here's how their contact information and you guys go out and contact them, but they don't do any of the deals or anything like that. And they, uh, kind of uh let them you know but they kind of you know they get the handshakes going right well i mean you need that so it's very important and you know it doesn't again doesn't sound like they're really getting too much in the way they're just kind of a bridge there so that's good seems like uh and it seems like kind of from when he talked his kind of his biggest issue with everything and i mean i think this would go against uh you know schottenstein and cardell too is that he has He's a little concerned about like these collectives that are forming that are, you know, trying to help get kids paid and stuff like that. Cause he's like, he's like, there's still rules against trying to induce players to go. He's like, so he's like, it's kind of seemed like he's a little disappointed that the NCAA hasn't been a little bit more forceful on that. And that the federal government hasn't created some sort of national regulations. And he's like, you know, until some of that stuff gets answered, it is going to be the wild, wild West. Yeah. Um, no, I know. And it's like, you know, I can't, I'm kind of disappointed in that too, though. So that's, I, I mean, am too, that you, you honestly, would think that they like, got to come up with some sort of, I'm good. I'm good with kids. Like, you know, they're, they're good enough to get paid that people want them to get paid and they pay them once they prove themselves in college. But I'm not cool with boosters, you know, <laughs> like now hey, that they can legally, uh, yeah. School. These boosters who own businesses, well, I'll just make you, uh, I can legally just put you to work for my uh, business and here's your $100,000 or whatever, or here's your free car. And so it's like they can give them all the same uh, little perks that they gave them before, but just now it can be legally done. Right. No, I know. Um, but yeah, so he talked about that with the edge team. Um you know, somebody asked him questions on like uh, the divisions, like how his opinion on if they would, uh, you know, with the divisions and stuff like that. And he said, yeah, obviously he doesn't have an opinion one way or the other. Um, you know, his biggest concern that uh, if they get rid of the divisions, he would be fine with that. He did make a joke. He's like, I think Ohio State should uh, be invited to every college or every Big Ten championship game. Um and I think the reason why he doesn't care about the divisions, I mean, we talked about this before, but in eight of the last nine years, uh, regardless if there was a division or no division, Ohio State would have, if there was no divisions, Ohio State would have been in that uh, right. you know, Big Ten championship game because, I mean, they would have played Michigan this year. They would have played Penn State in 16. They would have, uh, I mean, the only one that they wouldn't have been in was 15 when both Michigan State and Iowa was in front of them. But, uh, you know, yeah, and we we had talked about. It. I mean, all that all that benefits. That's just two teams. It's Ohio State and whoever's number two in the East. That's yeah, yeah. That's the so, only that's the two teams that get benefited by them take getting rid of the conferences. So he and he bit. brought up a kind of interesting point, and some of this gets into the playoff expansion too. And um, I kind of heard uh, some of the media members talking about this on a podcast a few weeks ago, and I can't think of which one. I think it was a morning scoop, but I'm. 
he was interviewing somebody, but I can't remember if it was them or not. But um, he um, you know, he was talking about Gene that you know, on the one part, I mean, this is Gene brought this up. This wasn't brought out in the media. He's like, you know, you know, some of these kids come in and they never get to play a game against another school. He's like, so if we get rid of the divisions, I would like to remedy some of that. That you know, I would like at least in their four, a four year period that. They at least play every Big Ten school that, you know, that, you know, at least give them the right to play all the you got to protect your rivalries. So, you know, obviously that's the big one. And if they go to a night and they have a keep a nine game schedule, I think that's pretty easy. You take your top two or three rivals and then you do a six game rotating seven or six or seven game rotating thing against the rest of the conference. And mm-hmm. you should be able to play everybody within four years, I would think. Uh, and then. But the big thing he talked about, he's like, you know, I don't know how much, and especially if you end up doing the playoff expansion and stuff like that, I don't know how much is the big is the Big Ten championship game or the championship games even worth it anymore. And you know, that's and brought up a good point. That's something I've heard different media guys talk about before. You know, essentially, if you're going to add another possibly a few games into the playoffs, you know, maybe make more sense to bring the playoffs up a couple of weeks instead of pushing it back further. Yeah, uh, no, I, 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 you know, I can definitely understand that. I don't. Well, obviously, I like the, you know, the conference championship games. I, I like saying that, you know, we won the conference title on the field. That, but yeah, I've also before Big Ten had it, I was, I was perfectly fine saying that, you know, we won it outright during yeah. the season. Also, I, I didn't need that to feel good about myself. So if, if that's something they gotta get rid of, they gotta get rid of it. Whatever, but. If that gets us to an expansion and like, yeah, I mean, get it started sooner. That's fine. If you got to get rid of those to get it started sooner, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And he said, he thinks that it eventually will go to 12 teams. And I think his thought process, if we're going to 12 teams, then, you know, every one of the, every one of the teams in those five big conferences that deserve to be there will be there. So that kind of just gets rid of the whole, like, well, what if uh, a three or four lost team that's not in there? What if they upset them? Well, just do away with the conference championship game. And then you don't have to worry about that anymore. And, uh, yeah. you know, that's Ohio state or whoever the big team in the big 10 is going to be in that game. So, or in that playoff. So, um, yep. makes sense. Um, he talked about, uh, then he like, kind of going on some of that, the, the playoff expansion. He talked about that. He said that, uh, you know, there's a lot of different concerns about how different things are. Everybody has their own little concerns. His biggest concern though, he said was, like he wants to see other media partners being able to bid the thing. He's like, that was my biggest concern. And it seems like we've worked through that one. So it seems yeah. like if they, whatever they do, then some of the other conferences or other uh, TV partners are going to get the, uh, there's going to be an actual bidding process that goes out for that stuff. So I think that was, you know, which I think is the right thing to do. I, you know, it's, it is kind of crazy that, the SEC and ESPN are the ones that are pushing all this, that you know, it's like they know that SEC is probably going to get the most teams in there. Well, and we know the most ESEC love affair does come from the, from the South from, or from the ESPN. I mean, you can, it's a fair argument whether they are the best conference or not. And, you know, I, I do get that argument. I sometimes I think, uh, you know, some Buckeye fans are a little naive about how good the conference really is in the SEC. I mean, yeah, they have bad teams, but, Alabama has been God for a long time and you know, so the, and when Alabama doesn't win, it always seems like an sec team is the one that wins it. So, well, I mean, top to bottom, they just, the thing that separates the sec is not, I mean, yes, I think the talent is better because kids play football year round in high school, you know, down in the bigger demographics. Now there that were there years ago, but they are serious about their football programs down there top to bottom. I mean, maybe, you know, get rid of Vanderbilt and that, conversation but outside of that you know the majority of the sec they're very serious about their football programs yeah and so and you know g brought that up he you know somebody asked him, are you trying to follow the sec and he's like and i think he probably maybe was kind of a little washed over this a little bit because i think he, that has to be in his mind because i think those are more peer competitors in the game of football maybe not in other sports or maybe in, not in academics or stuff like that but when it comes to football itself I think those are peer competitors to him that, um, you know, he said, he's like, Hey, the big 10, you know, we have to keep track of everything, but we also have to worry about ourselves and what's best for us. He's like, and we do, we offer a lot more sports than they do down there. They average 19 where we almost average, you know, 
we're in the high 20s, low 30s for most of ours. And, you know, or higher 30s. I think Ohio State said, like, it seems like 100 different sports. But, like, so, Mm -hmm. you know. And so, I mean, Gene brings up some good points on some of that stuff. I, I think that maybe and maybe not in the Big Ten's eyes, but definitely in his eyes, I think he he keeps much more attention to the SEC than probably he wants to let on that he does. Right. But that's how you stay competitive with them. Yeah. So um, then we'll see what, what I wanted to hit on at least that. Um, yeah, we did the playoff expansion. The, 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 the NCAA. We'll get into that towards the end. Um, yeah, so the, the home field. The Real home field's the one I wanted to, yeah. The, I think a lot of people made it out a lot worse than when he he he, he didn't outright say that we want to go to Lucas Oil. That, you know, even though he called it the Hoosier Dome for a while, Tim May had to tell me, he's like, Tim May had to be like, you do mean Lucas Oil, right? He's like, yes, I'm old, Tim. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, that was kind of funny, but uh, I think I think he's kind of looking at it as a Big Ten as a whole thing. He's like he's like Columbus was one of the few cities that are below the snow belt in the Big Ten. And he's like so he's like it might not matter so much for us that we can look at historical data and be like you know what and if it's in the right week we might say he's like and that's kind of what he brings up. He's like that's another thing about do we really need the conference championship game? He's like I think he would be much more open to holding a playoff game in Columbus. If it is like the, you know, if it's the first week of December, like, is right. that, a, you know, that's not a bad week normally. I mean, it's, oh. it's cold, but it's, you're not getting, you're not in the heart of winter here in Ohio, you know, um, even in Northern Ohio anymore, it seems like early December is fairly normal. So like for yeah. that time of year. So like, I yeah, mean, I, I think I didn't listen to the press conference. So I'm not just going off kind of what you said, what I've heard from other people though. It's kind of like there's this mix between people are like, you know, Gene's automatically saying they wouldn't play a game in Columbus and he just wants to get rid of a home field advantage. And then there's other like the other point of it is like it sounds like he's kind of being an ambassador for the Big Ten that like, hey, you know, there is the off chance we're not the team hosting someone. And, you know, maybe Minnesota doesn't want to play outside in December or something. Yeah. And I think part of it, I mean, I know some of our our rival fans uh it took some shots at it this year, but I also think from a competitive advantage, it just makes sense. I mean, holding a game in Indianapolis is going to be a home day. I mean, it is not going to be a neutral field site. If Ohio state chooses not to hold the game in Columbus, I, they're going to put that in the rules that this is still a home game for us in Columbus. We get the bulk of the tickets. We get, you know, the home field, we get the home locker rooms. We get all we're, we're wearing the home jerseys. And quite frankly, when you know how Ohio state is built, they don't do bad in Indianapolis for a lot of reasons that, you know, yeah. that, that, that they, they're, they're fine in those arenas. So I, I think that that's probably a way he's looking at it too, is like, why would I possibly, yeah, it might be a weird year where we get a snowstorm or something like that. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's fun to play the outdoor elements and stuff like that, but it's better for my team to possibly move on in the playoffs if they get to play that game in Indianapolis. So from a competitive advantage, it's they'll still have the majority of Ohio State fans there. It is not a 10-hour drive over to Indianapolis. Right. And oh, whenever yeah. Ohio State's been in the conference championship game, when it is a neutral game, it, they are the home team in that game, and they have been every year okay. that they've been in it. Right. Yeah, very true. All right. Um uh okay the staff so they he talked about uh he did talk about uh they asked him something so austin ward did ask him this question he's like you know ten, about 10 years ago maybe eight you know you did like whenever like the first coach was uh that went over the million dollar mark for the assistant coaches you know you didn't seem like you were too in favor of it and like what's changed from here and you now and he, you know, he pretty much i mean gene was honest about it. he's like you know i still don't know how necessarily how i feel He's like, but that's the market. And he's like, and if Ohio State wants to be the best, Ohio State has to be in the market. And right. so, I mean, he understands his thing. And he said, you know, he was talking a day about midway through the season, what they're going to do to fix the defense. And he said, Ohio State, you know, you could kind of look at it. Maybe they got a little lucky. That loss, it sucked. But, you know, normally your coaches aren't out recruiting and be all the field calls to possible new coaches you know, that week in between Michigan and the Big Ten championship game. Sure. He's like, but it was different this year. Um, 
he when Ryan Day uh, went in and kind of ended up circling Jim and stuff. Uh, we looked at about how much money he was making, and we and I told Ryan, he's like, well, go make the deal. That's make the deal to you know get him in here if that's who you want. And you know he said, you know, fortunately, you know President Johnson was on board with it, and you know it was all history at that point. That uh, so it seemed like if you kind of read between the lines, you know, I, Jim Knowles might even even been able to get a couple more million out, not a couple more million, a couple more hundred thousand probably out of them like that. I think they they were probably willing to go a little bit over too if they needed to, and uh, so I mean it seems like you know, <clears throat> and then you know we've talked about you know how it's just weird about the support staff and stuff. Uh, he brought that up too. He's like you know it's obvious to everybody the staffing has uh, you know our support staff uh, model has changed, and he's like you know again that's what the market dictates, and uh, you know you know other schools around it, but he said he, t he's told Ryan day this. And uh, I think this was a good line. He said, he told Ryan day this, he's told urban this before just because you want to bring more guys in, you better give them serious jobs because more guys equal more risk. And, uh, so you better yeah. give them jobs that are serious because, you know, then you don't want a bunch of guys in here effing around pretty much that, right. uh, sure. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's, like you said, I mean, Alabama's doing it. Ohio State's going to do it if they want to. If they want people to believe that they're trying to be Alabama, they got to yeah. try to be Alabama. So yeah, I mean, but you, we've only been excited about this. So that's no, I like it. I like it because it lets it helps the. If it takes a couple things off the coaches' plates, that I mean, and he said it seems like it's all over. I mean, they Pantonia staff was bumped up. Uh, they said the training staff was bumped up, so it seemed like everybody got a few extra people. Good. I guess, I guess the Pantoni staff's up to like seven guys now, and uh, so I don't know where it was at, but uh, it's. I mean, he said in the press conference that they added a few more people to the training staff, and you know, that it is what it is. That this is what the market dictates, and Ohio State needs to be in those markets, and so uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to finish up with, I'm trying to make sure I got um. All the, uh, yeah, you know, he did talk about the defense. Uh, you know, he did say that, you know, obviously there was things that Coach Day wanted fixed. There's, there were some things that were obvious and stuff. And, uh, you know, we gave him his, our full support to him to fix those things. Um, just the, la the last two things, actually. So somebody asked him about the 2020 emotions within the league, about everything. And he kind of admitted, he's like, you know, I wasn't happy about, there was a lot of, it was like, we went through the wide range of emotions and even anger. And he's like, you know, the big tens in a much better position now than we were after 2020. There was a lot of hard feelings and it seemed like a lot of those, uh, those meetings and stuff, a lot of them were pretty intense and that, uh, yeah. there was a lot of opinions back and forth and he's like, you know, and he, he met it. He's like, I'm, I'm glad to see we're back to kind of where we were that, you know, we're actually able to kind of talk to each other and stuff like that. He's like, cause that was, that was a rough, those, uh, those meetings, those few months and stuff that, and the, heading into the 2020 season. And I so bet. that was it. That was interesting. Um, so he was asked about pay to play and like, if, uh, you know, Tim a asked him this question and, you know, first it was kind of two part I want to hit on it. So first Tim a's like, do you think the NIL kind of deal did it kind of, uh, did it kind of save the NCAA that they get lucky that this kind of came through. And he pretty much said, no, he's like, he's like, you know, the NCAA should have dealt with this years ago. We were too late. They didn't just bite the bullet or whatever, get saved that he's like, you know, it created a lot more problems than it ended up, uh, you know, just from them not acting on it. Right. He's like, he's like, they've done this before with other types of things. He's like, you know, the players being all the pay players, parents to go to, bowl games and stuff like that. He's like, that should have been dealt with years ago. And like, you know, it take forever to, it just takes them forever to do stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting, but the thing that I really thought was interesting is he said that, you know, they were on that same thing, you know, they were talking about is, you know, could there be a day someday in the future where the universities are paying the players? And he's like, honestly, I think that's where we're going to end up. And I mean, he outright said that, that yeah. I think that's where we're going to end up being. He's like, but he's like, there's something that doesn't get talked about in all this stuff. He's like, if we go into this employer employee relationship, well, that's a lot different things that, you know, nobody brings up. He's like, there is now there's reviews and there's, you know, expectations and there's goals. And he's like, and when you 
don't meet that type of stuff. Terminations come from stuff like that. And he's like, you know, but uh, first time I've ever really heard somebody be really candid about that because nobody does talk about that stuff. And like you think about the NFL players get cut and stuff like that. Right. And he's like, you know, if uh, if this is the type of thing. So if, could you could you get your scholarship? Could you get your scholarship fired for basically being terminated for if you don't live up to your end of what the contract is? And well, like, I mean, if you think about it, in the NFL, it's a very and I don't know how it's changed over the years. I don't really follow the contracts all that much anymore, but it's a very rare situation in the NFL that you can keep yourself one hundred percent protected. Yeah, and so you can't even like say like just because this kid's the number one recruit out of high school well, what the hell does that mean like that doesn't mean anything he goes to alabama like he has expectations if alabama is paying him a million dollars to be there alabama is a right or ohio state they have the right to say hey you know what you're not the best player on our team like you you take less money or you're out of your con- or your you know contract um but scholarship you know what whatever it may be at that point but yeah i mean that does i think that's something you're right People don't talk enough about that. It was just for years. And you and I are big proponents of NIL. We thought, you know, kids should be able to go in. And if they were good enough athletes and someone wants to pay them to market them, they should be able to market themselves and they should be able to make money because someone wants to give them money. It's a free market. You and I have always said that, you know, the kids deserve that. But, but you know, even we haven't talked about it. I don't know if we've really even thought about it was that other side of the coin is, what if they're not holding up their end of the bargain? Yeah. Like they, you know, it's not, it's fine. Like if someone still wants to pay them money, absolutely. They can accept that. But you, if you're not someone that's marketable, you know, can you, can you lose money? You know, it's, is there something in the contract that they can't, you know, they, they can't make everything because of that. And I, I think probably some people would structure the language to incentivize performance for, you know, more money, but you know, if it does come to a point where it's the college that's actually the one paying the kids, then yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are employees of the school. If they're not doing their job, then, you know, they they might lose their scholarships. Yeah. So some of that, yeah, very interesting. Uh, you know, that's kind of where I wanted to finish up on that. Uh, you know, because, you know, like we said, we don't really, people don't really talk about it, but it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, the biggest thing that always gets talked about with, you know, the colleges playing, paying the players is, how do you get around the title IX issues? Because, you know, there's obviously, you know, there's a lot of other, there's federal issues that come to right. that because, you know, you got multiple players in multiple sports. It's like, you make it equal across the board that if you're a freshman, you make this sophomore, this all the way up to a senior, or do you say, well, this person makes this much money because football brings in this, so, but you know, women's soccer doesn't bring in that. And then you got, all kinds of possible lawsuit issues over that. So there was always, there was always going to be issues on that side of this yeah. part of it that I always felt NIL kind of did away with because it's not the universities dealing with it. It's, you know, and as NIL has proven that a lot of the naysayers wrong is that there is money in it for women on uh, in oh, women sure. athletics. And, you know, there's been some huge deals. Maybe overall it's not as been as much as the big two big men's sports, but that's, you know, a lot of women and a lot of men that play in the Olympic sports have made a lot of money. Well, I mean, if, if you and, went into this in any like capacity thinking that, you know, and I'm, I'm not, not trying to come off sexist. So you can even say like a men's, you know, swimmer or something like that, that they were going to be in anywhere, you know, they would make as much as the top football player on that team. You're, you were being naive about it, but it's still a good thing that, the people, you know, they can make money for themselves. Uh, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still, you know, you, you still get paid on what your demand is. If someone, you know, if there isn't the demand to pay, you know, someone the same as there is the top men swimmer from Ohio State as there is to pay C.J. Stroud, that is what it is. I mean, he's a starting quarterback at Ohio State. Yeah. It just, exactly. you, you can't be like, you know, dense to the conversation but at the same time you know that kid could have been making nothing they both could have been making nothing so yeah exactly but yeah all right i don't know if you have anything else you want to throw in there but uh it was a good press conference i thought he was very candid i liked how some of the things he said no um i'm good for tonight 
We'll see right. you guys next week. So thank you everyone for stopping in tonight to the Buckeye Bar. I'm John. And I'm Mike. OH. I O. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Buckeye Bar, guys, on Buckeye Bar Talk. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that all notifications bell so you see when new content is added. And please remember to like and share so we can grow our audience. Uh, don't be afraid to comment. We want to know what you're thinking and we want to know what content to add for you guys. O-H-I-O. <laughs>